everyone. It is Marilyn and and welcome to Who Can It Be Now? We are doing a very special pod party today. Today we are meeting with members, with Membership From Your Soul. And yes, we do invite a few people outside of Membership For Your Soul to come in and join in on these pod parties so they can get an opportunity to experience this friggin' incredible community of people. I was sitting here and um, turning on the Zoom and they were all starting to appear and I know everyone that's in membership, at least everybody's here today. I know them pretty well because they've been in my program for quite some time. And my heart is just like a, a blossom. It's like a lotus flower. It's just like, Wah! it's just opening up because I just love them so much. They're so incredible. So we are going to talk about bridging um, consciousness and soul today and how to truly surrender to your guides. I have been getting download upon download going on in my life because I'm going through a huge transformation, a lot of change, a lot of growth, a lot of expansion. And with that comes a lot of epiphanies and a lot of lessons. And through my lessons, I've just been getting download upon download. So we're going to talk a bit about this today and how to move yourself out of the way so you can let solution drop in. I'm going to share some stories. I never know really what's going to happen because I allow my, I move out of the way and let my guides work through me. They also read the energy of the group. They also know who's going to be listening to this, whether they listen to it the day it comes out on the podcast or it's evergreen. They have all that energy figured out. So they know exactly what needs to be said through me. So that is going to happen. So we'll do a little teaching, might do a little meditation, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A. So that's what you have to expect today. I want to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Um, I've been working a lot with my position in life and what I do and what I'm here to do. And many times for many, many years, I hid. So I would make offers or I would do launches and I would sell membership and Soul Finder Academy. And I always felt good about selling it. But there was a part of me that still was like, kind of like stepping on the gas and stepping on the brake, stepping on the, stepping on the gas and stepping on the brake, because I was really getting comfortable with um, who I am and, and what my purpose is here in, I don't like the word purpose because that could sound very limiting. So it, my vision with God, with the universe and the creation, co-creation that I'm having with my guides and how I'm meant to teach and create powerful uh, conversations, how I'm able to teach techniques and tools and create um, elevated conversations for people. And I feel like it's not that I'm creating the elevated conversations. What it is, is my guides and I are bringing forward techniques and tools for you to dive into your soul and really have a conversation with yourself so that you are moving through things quicker, easier, in a better way, more like more ease and grace. Yeah, it's bumpy, but it's still when you come to a solution in 24 hours versus three months, that's a lot easier. And one thing I recognized about myself yesterday was that I am no longer going to call myself a coach. I'm a teacher. I'm giving you techniques and tools so that you can coach yourself. So with that said, I have a couple of things that are happening. And if you want to check out my website at marilynaloria.com, go check it out. We're going to be reorganizing it. And there's different ways to work with me. One is you can listen to my podcast, Who Can It Be Now? And do that. You can also now buy my book, which is, I'm going to show this because we do have video and we are uploading the video onto YouTube. Um, my video is probably not pinned because I just talk into the camera at this time. Guides, and I still don't know the friggin' title, Mystical Connections to Soul Guides and Divine Teachers. The only title I know is Guides because that's really just in my heart and soul. So the publisher did the subcontext, uh, subtext, whatever you wanna call it, whatever they call it, mystical connections to soul guides and divine teachers. So check that out. You can also go to joinsass.com. That's another live thing I'm doing. Check that out. You can go to membershipforyoursoul.com forward slash trial, come check it out for a dollar uh, for 30 days. And if you like it, we offer you opportunities to continue on. We also have a new thing on membership where well, we're not getting into that. There's so many new things in there. It's really cool. And even a way to cancel on your own. So you don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, I, I want to cancel. And if they don't, we always answer emails. We're very good customer service, but we've now given the power back to you guys. So you can do that yourself. But all of that isn't written out somewhere yet as of the time I'm recording this. By the time you're listening to this, it might be. And then we have Soul Finder Academy, which is now a reduced price because it's a digital course. And there's some really cool bonuses with that. And then next level living is a whole other thing. All right, housekeeping out of the way. Everybody, tell me, tell me one word that describes your life today. And don't don't be like, I gotta find a positive word. Really be honest. My my word for today is wonkiness. My word for these days is wonkiness. What's one word that you feel can really describe your life today? Sandra says magical. 
<laughs> Beth. Creative, still. Oh, Dashka, I like that. Still. Only because I, I want to lean into that. Blessed. I love a lot of blessed happening. Promising. Today is beautiful. Love that. Peaceful. Okay. Alone. Empowered. Great, great, great. Now I have another interestingly synchronistic. Great. Now my next question to you is, and I want everybody who's listening to participate, Honest, and I want you to be really honest with yourself, guys. There's no scoring here. What you feel today is going to be different than tomorrow and different from yesterday. Esther says busy. I get it. Louise, bit scary. Gotcha, girl. I'm in the same place. Um, not sure I know that word. Maurice, consigliere, consigliere, uncertainty. I don't have the highest vocabulary, so. All right. From a scale to one to 10, <laughs> think of something that you really want to figure out in your life right now, something that you really want the solution to, or something you're grappling with or struggling with. A lot of people struggle with money, right? Finances, making money from what you love to do, something that you're really grappling with. Think about that right now. And on a scale from one to 10, one being, yeah, I ain't doing that well. 10 being, man, I'm freaking killing it. Where are you in the surrender to your guides, to the universe? Where are you to the surrender? So from one to 10, like whatever you're grappling with, where are you in surrender? Sandra, Sandra said four, Corinne's nine, Lisa's five. Hi, Lisa. Sue's eight. We've got sixes, eight, six, eight. Okay, seven, five, very open seven, fives or sixes. All over the map. <laughs> Beautiful between four and seven. Okay, good, eight. So now I have another question and I want everybody participating because this is super important. On a scale from one to 10, one being, I don't know what the F I'm doing, 10 being, man, I got this thing figured out. Where are you entrusting yourself? Where are you entrusting yourself? Oh my goodness, there's so many names here. Aaron and Chris, yay, Lisa. Um, eight, eight, seven, five, five, varies from three to 10. I'm with you, Anise. Three, four, five, eight. Okay. Three. Great. Okay. Six. We're going to shift that. We're going to shift that today. One of the things that I'm learning a lot from my guides, let, let me, I like to keep playing because I feel like when people play along, they learn more. At least that's my guide saying it. They're like having like a little kid thing with me today. I feel like red balloons are showing up, pink balloons, bunny rabbits. All right, let's just ground this, guys. Okay. Do you know <laughs> what your soul wants in this lifetime? Do you know? Let's. We can talk about career. We can talk about lifestyle. Some of you are retired. So do you know what your soul wants in this lifetime? Okay, we've got a no, we've got a yes, we got generally, I think so, freedom to choose, Sheila said, yes, I think so, yes. Okay, I want you now, close your eyes. I want you to just breathe. I want you to recognize that your breath is power. It's your power. It's your inner dialogue with the universe. It's your dialogue with spirit. You don't even need to have words in your breath. Your breath is connection to your soul. So I want you to spend a little time right now imagining your breath as this musical instrument. It could be a guitar, it could be a drum, it could be a flute, it could be a saxophone. It's a musical instrument. So I want you to see your breath as this musical instrument inside your body. It's the actual instrument. So I want you to see the physical instrument. If you struggle with seeing, choose it. I saw a saxophone right away and I was like, I'll grab that. You may just like saxophones. You might like those big frigging guitar looking things, cellos, whatever they're called. I can't remember the names right now. Breathe into that musical instrument. And as you breathe into that musical instrument, Notice how it feels. And as you're breathing into that musical instrument, it starts to play. 
and your breath and the instrument is making it play. So you may see little hands coming out playing it, or it just may the strings may be moving or the drums may be going, it doesn't matter. But your breath is not the only thing that is making this instrument play. This instrument is playing because your soul, your spirit, whatever you call it, is playing along with your breath and the instrument is being played. Breathe into that. Notice the music that is being played. And at one moment, like when I was doing it, it went out of tune. Nothing wrong with that. Play, let that music play and let it play throughout your physical being. Don't try to hear the music. If you hear it, great. But this isn't about hearing the music because the music that may be created, you've not yet heard. So the music you may be creating, you've not yet heard. So spirit asks that you lean into the vibration of it. It's filling your whole physical being. With your awareness, your inner awareness, I want you to start with, the, even though the music is being played, the instrument's being played, what is behind the instrument? Your spirit, your soul that is helping you play this instrument, tune into that being, that part of you that is helping you to play this instrument and just send breath into it. And the two of you now conscious of each other, your spirit and your consciousness are now coming together. And through your breath, you are playing this instrument. Take some time now to do that. Now through this breath, an image is starting to be born a feeling, an energy. It might look like a hazy, smoke-filled thing. You might have a crisp, clear image. You may just have a color. And it's starting to leave your physical body and it's starting to show up in front of you. And what this is, is the birthing. It's the birth of your physical being and your soul working in harmony, working together, and you are creating something that is so in alignment with who you are. It is your truth, it is your highest light, it's in your highest alignment. It feels so good, it feels like coming home and it is showing up outside in front of you just so you could have a visual perspective. Let it just show up in front of you and allow this image to start becoming clear. Don't manipulate it, let it be. Allow this image to start becoming clear and just allow yourself to observe it and see it. Take a moment now to do that. Now, for those of you who struggle with getting things wrong or right, release that and just let whatever shows up, show up, even if it's just feelings. Even if you're frustrated, just let that show up. How does it feel to see this? Now, if you like what you see, I want you to inhale it in and breathe it into your physical body again. I want you to notice how that feels. And I just want you to breathe into your feet, breathe into your legs. Notice how you feel from the beginning of the call, beginning of listening to this, to how you feel now. I want you to ground a little bit, but I do have some questions I need to ask you with your eyes open. So 
the way to ground and be able to still be immersed in the, in the experience is you could just feel your feet, feel your physical being. You could touch your hands, you could touch your legs, touch your elbows, just touch your body so that you physically are present. And then open your eyes. Now the question I have for you, after you've had this experience and you saw this image and then you brought this image back into your physical being, on a scale from one to 10, one being I'm not there, 10 being I'm there, and it's not about being at the place. Are you making decisions from your consciousness from this place that you just saw? Let me reword that question. Is your consciousness in alignment with this vision? And are you making choices in your everyday life based on this vision? Scale from one to 10. Is your consciousness making everyday decisions from the place of this vision. The reason why I ask this is your consciousness is usually making decisions based on a, and I hate this word, but a 3D reality, which is usually fear, scarcity, anxiety, lack, abundance, all different things mixed in at once. And it's not always aligned with your soul. So is your consciousness making decisions based on this vision? One to 10. Five, seven, eight, ten, four, five, ten, six, four, seven, eight. Okay, four, not daily. Okay, so if that's the case, how aligned did this vision feel to your soul from one to ten? I need to know that first. How aligned did this vision feel? Ten, huge motivator, ten, nine, eight, eight. So it's pretty aligned. Great. Eight, ten, seven. Okay. So take this day, for instance, and it's now 3.23 p.m. Pacific Coast time as I'm recording this, maybe a different time when you're listening to this. Think back to this day now. Every decision you made, every choice you made, every email you sent, having a cup of coffee, journaling, how you spent your day. Think about those decisions. Were they aligned with this vision from a scale from one to 10? Take a moment, it's okay. Eight, seven, six, seven, three to four, six, six, six. Even the self care, six. Okay, eight, six. Okay, great. A lot of you are fairly high. Some of you may be around a three of a four, not that many. Some are around a six. Uh, I'm going to be about. Mm, a five to seven, depending on the moment. So what I want to teach you right now, and then we're just going to get into Q&A because I want to know how this experience was for you. And I want to get into this. And I want you to get into a practice. I don't know that we always know or are always conscious what our soul wants. And I feel like a lot of times we are consciously making decisions from a vision of a place where we want to go or we're making decisions from reaction of where we are right now. And if we spend a little more time recognizing what's going on in our life and then taking it apart in this very simple way of scaling it from a one to 10, you may recognize that you're making decisions based on past experiences. You're making decisions based on um, where you are in the 3D reality and you're not making decisions from your soul. So let me explain it through story first, okay? So I think it was last weekend. Pretty sure it was last weekend. And I shared some of this already, but I'll share it on the podcast. I was going through a lot of anxiety. I'm making a lot of changes in my life, extreme amount of changes. And through those changes, I don't really know how they're going to land in the world. All I know is I have to make them. So I'm operating on this intuitive trust, but I'm scared because I don't know where they're going to land, but I know that I can't go back to what I was doing. So I'm in this moment of making big decisions that are shifting my 3D reality in a way that is fucking freaky. And 
I have to sit here and trust the unknown. That's where the surrender part comes in, right? I'm surrendering, I'm trusting you. And then I have to trust myself that I am doing what's right, even if what's appearing is a lot of wonky crap. So I got into, I woke up at like 2.30 in the morning and some of you know this story because you're in membership and I share these stories with you guys pretty much first. And I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, very anxious, extremely anxious. And spirit said, go get this book I'm reading, Happy Pocket Full of Money. And it was upstairs in my kitchen. And the last thing I want to do at 2.30 in the morning is get out of my bed and climb upstairs. And I was like, okay, I'll go get the book. And I went and got the book. And then it said, I was on a later chapter and it said, go to chapter two. I was like, all right, you really want me to go to chapter two? They said, go to chapter two and reread it. And I'm reading chapter two and it talks about if our consciousness and our soul are not aligned, we're gonna experience very jagged edges in our life. We're gonna experience a lot of disruption. We're gonna experience things in a really messed up way because our consciousness is making choices that aren't in alignment with our soul. And I was like, holy mackerel, that's what's going on right now. My consciousness is operating and making decisions that feel pretty good, but really what's showing up in the world is what my soul truly desires. Things are drying up. Things are going away. I'm freaking out on a conscious level, but this is what my soul wants. So then the question was, do you trust what's going away? Do you trust what's happening in front of you? And I went, not entirely, not entirely. I'm a little scared here. So spirit then said, what chapter, after I read the chapter, they said, what chapter are you on? And I went and looked at the chapter and it was chapter 18. And I went, holy mackerel, that's a big number for me. That's new beginnings in business. It also equals a nine, which is a soul number. So they went, read where you're at. So I was in the middle of chapter 18 and I read the paragraph and it was repeating what was in chapter two. So I knew that was a big synchronistic moment right there. And I recognized in the moment that what I was holding as a vision, I wasn't yet ready to have, and not in a bad way. Because in my vision, my physical communities, Membership for Your Soul, Soul Finder Academy, Next Level Living, wasn't really involved, wasn't really there. I was doing more writing and more podcasting, more um, speaking to, to groups. And so I brought myself back to the moment of today. And I went, I love that vision, but I'm not ready to give up my communities. I'm not ready to give up teaching my communities in these arenas. I'm not ready to give up membership for your soul. I'm not ready to give up next level living. And I saw the, 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 the opposing forces at work. And I thought, okay, great. Now we can align. Now we can align. Now I can make conscious decisions based on what my soul desires, which is more storytelling, getting out more, teaching people, but also my soul doesn't want me to leave my communities. My soul is ready to teach more because what I get from you guys allows me to podcast, allows me to tell story, allows me to write my books because it feeds me. Am I making sense? Can somebody like repeat back what I'm saying, but not in like a three hour thing. I need someone to repeat back what I'm saying to me and raise your hand. And I would like you to repeat back what I just said and how you understand it. So if you want to raise your hand, raise your hand, because I want to make sure that I'm making sense. Cause sometimes I edit myself because I was on, a, I was being interviewed today and the guy said, can you tell us stories about synchronicities? I'm like, man, I have so many. You're asking me on the spot. I don't remember them. Once I move past it, I move past it. So uh, Cheryl, why don't you unmute and share your understanding of it since you're the one who said you pulled an uh, uh, Oracle card because people learn from other people's stories. Go ahead, Cheryl. No, um, I've been going through the six weeks of uh, soul restoration. It's been the most profound experience. And I pulled Oracle cards yesterday. One was sacred reverence. And one was beyond the ordinary. And it was almost word for word what you just spoke, Marilyn. And I'm just so thankful that I was able to um, get off of work and be here. It's trusting in the unknown behind the still out there waiting to be brought into our reality, um, whatever form that's going to take. But knowing that every all of our guides are behind the scenes, they know what our soul core wants 
and they're bringing something to us that is in alignment with that. And it's the sitting in the, the stillness and the reverence, knowing that they're working for our highest good. Our higher self is throwing that radar out there for our highest good. But it, like you said, it's just sitting in the, with the meditation, that was such a peaceful, calm meditation, just validating that I'm on my right path. And you are, even though it, like some days or moments, right? You, like you said, you go from eight to three, depending on the moment, like, oh crap, I'm scared. But spirit and our guides immediately come and like snap me out of it saying, we've sent you every sign to trust that we hear you. We are, keep bringing you into alignment with each decision. And it's becoming more powerful as the more alignment that I'm feeling I'm becoming, the stronger the validation is to stay in alignment. So when you step out of alignment, it's like a poke, not a poker. It is a poker. It's like, it's the contrast. Like you said, the opposing force are so strong. So you're like, whoa, no, that's, uh, that's the old story. I'm not going there. I love that. Let me ask you a question real quick, Cheryl. So I know I've known you for a while. So there's something you want to move out to move out of and move into. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So can you see where your conscious mind may get difficult in terms of taking the risk of moving out of something? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So can you see, I'm not telling you, like I would tell anybody who wants to, we'll just use the example of leaving a job, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants to leave a job tomorrow, it, that's not what I'm suggesting, but you can see how you can make conscious decisions where it's a very powerful choice. Like say you said, I'm leaving by December, that's it. And you made a very aligned choice on making that work for you so that it's ease and grace and it works together. Correct. Well, and when we were in that meditation, I heard clearly you were hungry for better. Mm. So my spirit is just like, and I just keep hearing the word intentional steps, intentional steps, hungry for better. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'm hungry for better, right? Yeah. And you know what? I want to share something with you. I was talking with somebody who's joining, who's in the SAS experience now. And, and for those of you listening, the SAS experience may be, you know, for those of you on the podcast, but we're going to be possibly redoing more SAS experiences. So you can read about it and join SAS.com. But I want to read something to all of you guys, because it came to me when I said it, I said, um, the money may escape you because you aren't fully doing what your soul wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of people struggle financially with getting in the money that they need in order to do what they want to do, right? But the money may, be keep, may keep escaping them because they're not owning what they want to do. So Cheryl, I don't know your whole circumstance that I want to get into this, but if you trusted fully that you being, you, you're doing your greater stuff, which is what spirit said to you, what they said to you, how they said it to you, which was great. I'm butchering it now. Can you trust that what you desire to do, if you really embraced it and owned it, that you would be taken care of financially and abundantly? That number's moving up at rapid pace. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, and, and like I said, the signs are just getting so strong and the trust, I just feel the trust is spreading throughout my being. So uh, yes, I'm it, yes, yes, yes. Great. Good. Okay. But it took me a while. So for those that are at the four, I was a four, I was a two. It's well, a I lot of work. And sometimes, you know, just keep the faith. Yeah. But sometimes also you're going to find the bigger that you go, you're going to find yourself some days at like a four or a two or an eight. And mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. what you do with those fours and twos. And even correct. Correct. So good. So I wanted, I'm going to keep you here for a second. Um, here's my next question, because I asked this question on my Facebook live this week. I said, if your soul was your therapist, what would your soul say to you right now? Keep blocking out the chatter of people who are not living their best life. Okay. Now I want to take this a step further for everyone. Because I love that we're able to get this inner guidance that's you're amazing, you're great, you're gifted, go do this, you know, do it, do it, do it. But I want your soul to give you an action-oriented step because a therapist is going to, if a good therapist is going to give you action-oriented steps, so you're living in the practical 
and you're combining the consciousness with your spirit, which is the same as soul. What is your soul going to tell you to do? I want everybody to answer this, to tell you to do in 24 hours to start believing, to knocking the people's voices out. What is an action oriented step you could take? Mine this morning said I need to get work on my vision board and get clear on everything I want to bring in. Okay, great. And has anything shifted with where I've been moving, you know, through? Okay. So um, thank you, Cheryl, for everything. I want everybody to do that like every 24 hours, but I want you to start raising the stakes. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is what I noticed when people answered, they would like, I'm incredible. I'm really gifted. I'm, and that, all of that is true, right? But nothing happens. Nothing changes if we're not incorporating that into our life. So something you said, Cheryl, about knocking out the noise, which I agree. And what I have learned is when I'm, and I'm sure you know this too, from your own moments in life, when I'm fully aligned and I'm like, yeah, this is it. I don't even hear the noise. Mm -mm. It has no resonance. It has no resonance. Exactly. And that's what it's like. And even my sister commented yesterday, she's like, who are you? Because all of that, you're not even in that realm anymore yeah. with what I was saying. It was like, my words have changed. You know, I didn't, I haven't noticed, but even she said, you're, you're, you're choosing different words. You keep saying intentional walking, intentional acting, intentional, intentional. Um, and I'm like, oh yeah, <laughs> I guess I am. Good. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So what I want you all to do now, and then we're going to move into Q and a, but I want to move into one more part. So in my little, uh, way what i'm trying to show you is that align your consciousness with your soul every day if you if you can there's going to be some days where even when it gets like rough i had a very very rough day yesterday morning i got an email that was like so effed up and i went immediately into insecurity anxiety like that and I was like, holy F, man. And I, I knew I had a, like, there was something going on that was so much bigger than me. I started the email train. I asked for something. I had spoken what I thought. I wasn't really speaking my truth. I was trying to sidestep it and say, I don't want to do this anymore. It, it's, you know, it's not you, it's me, whatever. And I was, and I was saying, but, you know, release me from this. And I was just like, and then the email that came back was so friggin' rude. I was like, this is why I don't want to work with you. I want nothing to do with you. But I was like the little girl, like, oh my goodness. And I felt so insecure. And I texted two of my friends right away, Tracy Crossley and Simone Wright. Simone's an incredible intuitive and she's an artist. Tracy Crossley is an incredible like mentor teacher and stuff. And they, and I sent them the message. Cause I was like, am I, maybe it's me. You know, those moments when somebody says something, you think it's you. And they were both like, Tracy was hilarious. She was like, I would never let somebody speak to me that way. And then my friend Simone was like, what, what? This is a coach. And um, I felt empowered and I needed a little bit of that. And that's why I like creating the communities that we have here, you know, with our programs, because I feel like in membership, you put something like that and you talk about it in membership, people are like really for you and helping you. It's not like, oh, turn the other cheek. I remember feeling really weird in spiritual communities because everybody was always like light and fun. Oh, it'd be great. They're so nice. Oh, those are such lovely people. And I'd be like, that girl's a fucking bitch, man. And I felt like there was something wrong with me because I wasn't all love and light towards people. And now I'm like, I'm done with that, right? So, and I love the communities we have. We're very real. We're very real. So I'm going to finish the story and then I'm going to turn it over to you. And I'm going to give you one, I'm going to give you homework, like a couple of steps. So I sent an email. I got to tell you guys, this email this moment for me was so powerful. It, it went back to my childhood. It healed so much. And I don't even care what this person thought. And I let it go. And I was, I was a little bit, I wasn't really nice. <laughs> I kind of let it go, but I didn't like, I just said, this is the exact reason why I'm leaving you. You need to finesse your coaching. Coaches, knock, don't tell the truth, but don't knock people down. They build people up, you know? And I went on and on. And I said, I'm done. I don't care what you think. I am done. 
I'm taking care of me. I felt so empowered and so amazing. That was a moment where my soul and my consciousness aligned because they said I'm worthy. I'm empowered. I'm strong. And that foundation that I built inside of myself was a jumping off point. There's somebody else I'm going to do it with that I'm done with you. So what I want to ask you to do is when you wake up in the morning, we don't always know what we want in the moment and that's okay. Breathe into that musical instrument. Let it play for you. Because sometimes what we think we, a lot of times we think we want, it's based on old thoughts or I wanted this vision. I thought I wanted, this is what I want. I'm holding on to this. So my, and I think vision boards are great, Cheryl. So I'm all for that because you're right. You're getting clear is super important. But allow the musical instrument play. Bring your consciousness into the musical instrument and play it together. And then as you go through the day and you're making choices, returning emails, um, making a decision about buying a class, making a decision about working with somebody, making a decision about selling a program. Bring those two together and see what the actual response is. Start responding from that place of being aligned. And then I feel you're gonna have, what Spirit has showed me is the distractions go away and the road gets even clearer. And you're just like Cheryl said, those voices go away and you're just, marching, marching, marching. And you just know exactly what to do and you understand what's happening. And then I'll tell you something else. Making decisions like I'm making right now, not knowing what the result is gonna be, but knowing I have to make them and they are big decisions. You just lean into that musical instrument and you're like, okay, I don't know, I'm surrendering. I'm trusting myself. And then I'm letting the synchronicity play out. That's what we're gonna be talking about in the SAS experience next week. Surrender, trust self, synchronicity. I need one more thing from you guys before I go into Q&A. I want you all right now, Cheryl used the word intention. I wanna bring it into something else and Cheryl, intention is fine. I want you to make a decision right now. I want you to decide to be what you saw your soul showing you. I want you to make that decision. I wanna hear it right now. I am this. I am this. And I want you to start making decisions in your life from that place. Okay. Uh, you can write it in the thing right now. And then I'm going to do a reading at the very end with the number 323. I'm not even looking at it right now just because um, Sandra said I'm cracking the this wide open. Great. And your decision could be, I'm just gonna trust myself for the next 24 hours. I'm going to surrender. So this is what I've been doing. My guides are like, will you please just surrender? So I've been doing this, waving my hands in the air going, I surrender, I surrender, and I trust myself. So that's what I've been doing. All right, I'm loving open woman to my ideal partner. I love that. I'm teaching and nurturing my community, beautiful. I am surrendering, great. I'm able to connect to my guides and higher self, beautiful. Okay, so now this is the portion where I'm going to answer questions. I only have, I'm going to only do about 20 minutes, 15 minutes really. So I'm going to ask that if you ask a question, you keep it to a sentence. I don't need the story, okay? So you could just raise your hand or if there's feedback. I also want to know how that meditation was for you because I've never done a musical instrument meditation and I thought that was allow. Uh, I thought that was amazing. Sorry, <laughs> allow. Okay, that's the word. Um, I thought that was allowing. So who wants to ask a question? Make sure you raise your hand, Sandra. Oops, I lowered your hand by accident, Sandra. Go that's ahead. Right. Um, when you asked us to step behind the instrument and, and uh, uh, visualize what was there, first of all, I, I was standing there crying. Yeah. Do you want to tell, tell me about that? I don't want to take your experience. It, it just felt... It felt very, very emotional, and I, I, I'm not sure what it was. You know what I'd love for you to do, Cheryl? I mean, um, Sandra, is I'd love for you to do a meditation behind the instrument. Okay. Thank See you. what's behind it. You're so powerful. I can only imagine what's going to come from that. For me, I'd like to, for me, it's about really aligning with my soul and my spirit. Because when my spirit was like, 
you've been asking for this life of creativity. We're clearing things for you. And now you're telling us that you're scared. And I was like, oh my goodness, they're totally right. And they were like, if you could just trust this completely, this will all work out. So do you want to say something else, honey? I know you unmuted, you muted yourself. You're good. All right. Thank you, honey. All right. Let's see who else. Jane. And then I'll go to Chris after. Hi, Jane. Hi, how are Jane, you? I think you're new to me. I don't know you. Yes, I am new. So, oh, just so be- nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you. Thank you for this. This is wonderful. You're welcome. Um, so I am trying to start my career and I- Okay, I so let me call- stop something real quick. I want Sorry. you to stop saying trying. That keeps you in okay. the energy of trying. Okay. Um, what is a word? I don't want you, I don't, we're not going to go into fluffy affirmations when they don't feel mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. So what would be something that you could say that would allow you to be engaged in the energy and also acknowledge yourself for doing what you're doing? See, when we say trying, it's almost like, oh, hello, cutie. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Does he have a word? For? Yes. You're trying? Well, no. Do you- they- doing something like that doing he said doing i love that thank you what's his name can we have his name or is it this is ryan hi ryan nice to meet you hey nice to meet you too and so you said doing instead of trying yeah or something like that i like that thank you (laughs) i think that's great how does that feel for you jane i like that actually okay because it's a good point it's a it's an action word um and i'm in the process of doing i think is probably um a good way to put it. Okay. Or, um, experimenting with stuff like that. Good idea. I love that. At- <laughs> what was the other one, honey? Ryan? What was- on. One more time. Working on. Working on. <laughs> love it. Thank you. I talked over you, so I couldn't hear it. I want to hear. <laughs> so what was your question? So... <clears throat> I feel blocked and I can't tell if it's just not the right, right time because obviously I have other, cons- you know what I mean? Other it things. feels like fear to me. Does it? Okay. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let me just tell you when I feel into it, I feel like spirit is saying to me, you know, exactly. Now it may not look exactly like it, like you're visioning. So that's mm-hmm. where the surrender comes in, where if we are in, a, we're in the vibration of what it is where we're choosing to do what your Mm -hmm. soul is being called to do. And then we let go of the end result. The surrender Mm -hmm. comes in. Then I feel like you're going to find a new, like it may take a different shape or a different form. It's still going to be exciting and inspiring. And I don't feel like the, one of the biggest lessons, because you're new to me, I don't know if you've ever heard me say this, but when I said to my guides, how do I get past the block? How do I get, this block has to go away. How do I get rid of this block? How do I get rid of this block? They said, you go around the block, you live your life. And whatever mm-hmm. that block is representing is going to show up in the life experiences and you'll work through it. I okay. think fear, but what do you feel about that? I, I think fear, I think, in, and thinking of my own value is, a, is for whatever reason, uh, difficult. Yeah. Are you, you're in the SAS experience? Or no. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. So we're going to be talking a little bit about energetics and sales of energetics. And it's not about manipulation. It's about ownership mm-hmm. of self. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to play with, Jane, is this is your birthright, this work that you designed to do. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have this thirst for it if it Mm -hmm. wasn't your birthright. Okay. I want you not to worry about outside validation. I want you to validate yourself in it for the next seven days. Okay. Does that make sense, honey? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I will. Does that help you? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. you. What a heart. Beautiful. (laughs) Nice to meet you. Thanks. Do you draw? Yes. You paint? You're very artistic, it feels like. I hardly do it at all, but I've taken art classes and- Do you like music too? I love music. Yeah, do them together. Mm. Put on some music and just paint, draw something if you want. You don't have to, but I think it might be fun. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you have a lot of music in you. Are you okay with me saying that to you? Sure. <laughs> Maybe you don't I can to... make something that records the vibrations and writes. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. 
And, <laughs> and don't listen to me. Just do what's best for you. Do what feels right. Yes. <laughs> Good for you. Great, Ryan. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Marilyn. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you. It was great meeting him. Okay. So I know Chris was next. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. I've enjoyed listening to these so uh, so many of them. So I was really glad to get on with you finally. Um, and you're I really, membership, Chris, right? Pardon? You're in membership for your soul. Yes, yes, yeah. I've been for several years. And so yeah. Um, uh, first of all, that book, Happy Pocket Full of Money, you randomly mentioned it in a live on Facebook one day. So I'm like, eh, I got to get that. And it's been profound for me. It really is a great book. Got to recommend yeah. it to everybody. Yeah. And read it. I read it a couple of times. And also it was better when I got the book and not the Kindle version, because I'm using yeah. the questions in the back and journaling. Right. It. Yeah. Wow. Impactful. Yeah. Good. Yes. And I have the audio version too, but I've really enjoyed reading and absorbing it. Um, it's been profound. And actually I really think it's helped me get very clear on my, the business that I've been wanting to develop. Um, and I know exactly, like it just, it brought everything into a clear picture for me. Um, but I've been experiencing, I know what I want to do and I've got like all my ducks in a row, but I keep getting these roadblocks come and I can't get it off the ground. And it just seems weird because it just feels so right to get yeah. this going. And now all of a sudden I've got these obstacles in the way. So you said roadblocks and I'm gonna go with that first because when you said roadblocks, what I saw was a roadblock, right? And the interesting thing about a roadblock, if you see a roadblock, you can see the road, but what's in front of you is just like a, you know, a horse, two horses, those things, whatever those are called in construction. Um, it's like a piece of wood and mm -hmm. little things. Yep. And really what the roadblocks are is they're not roadblocks. They're opportunities for you to, there's a timing aspect to this, Chris, but it's also an opportunity for you to allow the roadblock to speak to you. So what I would want you to do, I know I'm saying, thank you. Uh, what I want you to do is actually imagine yourself on a road, sitting with the block and having a conversation with it and asking it why it is doing this to you right now. What is it that it wants you to know? What is it is it preparing you for? Because they're showing me, so I had an interview this morning with this, um, with this guy, it's Positive Head Podcast, and it's gonna be out tomorrow night. And I started reading him and he wanted to do something back in 2009. This has nothing to do with you, Chris. It doesn't mean you're gonna be waiting this many years at all. They said, please do not hear it that way. And what happened was, is he started doing it and then things got in the way. And so he did something else and now he's ready to re-enter into it. And as I watched his journey, as he was talking about that, he was very much coming from a place from the past, like what happened in the past. So if there's anything from the past where you didn't succeed in something, allow that to be moved out of your way. Know that spirit is just, they're not taking you off the path. They're not roadblocking you. What they're, all they're doing is just calling you home to yourself to know your own self-worth, to really feel powerful in your decision. And they said, no block, roadblock can stop you from really moving forward. It's your imagine, it's like in your mind. So whatever that roadblock is creating, so I'm gonna have to ask you what one of the roadblocks is. But to me, when I'm in that energy, we're making it up. It's almost like where there's a part of us, there's like 10% of us that's happy the roadblock showed up because oh my goodness, this is so huge. If I actually step out on this path, if I allow people to see and hear me this way, am I really ready for this? I don't know if I'm really ready for this. Am I really ready for it? And then this roadblock shows up and it's like, oh, thank goodness the roadblock is there. I don't have to do it. Does any of that make sense to you? If not, you don't mm -hmm. have to agree with me. You know how I am. I, in a way, I felt like it, I like, you know, I meditated over it and I felt like it's, like slowing me down like maybe i was i mean I, oh, i'm ready to build a website and and i have the web designer in place and i know exactly i've written you know pages i know what i wanted to do i don't have the funds to hire the designer right now okay but i it, i the i know the money's coming but I couldn't get it fast enough. So then I'm like, well, maybe it's slowing me down. Like maybe it's, maybe I'm moving too fast. I'm going to tell you what's happening. Okay. You're thinking there's only one solution. You don't need a website to do what you want to do. 
you also, I don't know if you know about Fiverr and other things, you can right. put up one landing page. There are many people that have been super successful without a website. You're allowing that little thing to stand in your way. You can disagree with me, Chris. You know me well enough mm -hmm. to disagree with me. How do you feel when I say that? Um, I, I definitely know what you're talking about. Um, I do feel as though um, what I want to build is going to require a website, but I can definitely start with a landing page. Are you building the community that would go to that website when it's ready? Um, not yet. Okay, why? Um, because I don't have a website. <laughs> I guess I, okay. <laughs> yeah, why? Okay. I actually could start building it on Facebook because I could just build a page. That if that's where your audience is, and yes, yeah. and you know, Dashka just offered up, and I agree with this. You see, I want to use this as an example of what we do to ourselves. She said, Google sites for free landing page without ads. And I feel like you're you're thinking this is the only way to be successful. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know your whole vision, Chris. So I respect yeah. your feelings in this, but I'm gonna tell you I see this quite a bit. And really what it comes down to for me, and I might be wrong, is self-worth. You are worthy of having this no matter what and people working with you. Build that community. Okay. I've, I'm telling you, I've seen, especially people recently, get out of this is how it has to be done. And this is what I would suggest you do. Say your heart is just like, I want this website because it's really gonna speak my truth but I don't have the money. Okay, spirit, so I'm surrendering to you. Show me another way. Show me another way. And it doesn't mean we just sit in, in with our hands in the air, then we start noticing things. I, I, my lease was coming up on my car and I'm not ready to get a new car yet. I don't really wanna go into the down, like I was like well, figuring, try to figure out other ways. I could actually sell my car for more money and have the money and then, you know, and, and I'm like, do I really wanna do that? What do I wanna do? And it's, I was like surrendered. And then Spirit said, ask for an extension. I never knew you could ask for an extension. I've leased <laughs> Alexis for nine years. Googled, asked for an uh, extension. They said, you can. I called up Alexis yesterday. Like, oh yeah, we're more than happy to give you an extension of six months. So now I have time to sell my car, decide what I want to do. That solution would have never come in because I was in the, oh my goodness, I have to figure this out. I only have two weeks. What do you want to say to me? Um, no, I, thank you. I, you're right. I, I might be the one standing in my way. <laughs> Honey, I might. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I might be the roadblock. <laughs> yeah, we usually are, but it doesn't mean we get to feel bad about it. We just get to work through it. You don't need to be feeling bad about that. You just learned something great. Let me tell you that whatever you're learning right now is preparing you for a bigger moment because I've had to go up against different situations in my life that I wouldn't have been prepared for a year ago had I not gone through what I went through. Yeah. Do you feel like you have some solution to start working with? Yes, yes, I do. Thank you. Please thank get you. it out there. Thank you, honey. Yes, okay, thank you. I'm gonna take one more and then I have to move on. Andrea. Thank you, Chris. Let us know how it goes in membership, okay? And if Hi, Marilyn. Thanks for Hi, taking. Hi. Um, I'll try to be succinct. So uh, there's a creative project. It's not. This isn't even about money. This is really a personal thing. Of for a couple years more, I've been envisioning doing these like very short film vignettes of me in water and wanting to do like almost like moving poems where there's. So wait, what, what are you waiting for? Exactly. What am I waiting for? So it's when just, you asked, let me just say something. Let me use you as a teaching moment for a second, if that's okay with you. Yeah. This is my whole conversation. These are great questions, by the way. And you're not, this is not foreign to me, Andrea. I am not ridiculing you. I've been here. Like, what am I waiting for? Right. And, and really the honest truth, like, what am I waiting for? My second podcast, what was I waiting for? My first podcast. It really was about putting myself out there and being vulnerable. And maybe you're, there's going to be moments you fail. There's going to be moments that people don't like you. I got an email, like an email back, like stop making excuses for sending us emails. Unsubscribe me, get me off your list. And I'm like, oh, 
that hurt, but F you, you know, I don't want to curse. There's kids on here now. So we put ourselves in our way. What are you waiting for? Go ahead, Andrea, finish your question. Well, I just this, wanted to use as a teaching moment. No, I hear you. Thank you. And this was the thing that was just kind of frustrating for me is like, when it was like, what can you do in the next 24 hours? Right. Right away. I'm thinking about logistically things like, oh, I need to get a certain editing. doesn't matter. A certain software program to, to, to start filming. I mean, to start editing. But really what I was noticing was that I'm already projecting that it's going to be grueling because I'm a perfectionist and that I'm not going to enjoy it. So I'm like, if you keep having this vision and wanting to do it, but then you keep telling yourself it's going to be too hard and not fun. It's like, I either want to just let it go and not do it. Or so that's the block is that I'm like, it, it seems like a chore. And I'm like, but I have this vision. It's like, is this a chore or is this what you want to do? You know, and that's my block and it's, it's old. So I don't know. I just, that's what I want. I just want to bring it. No, it's that good. In. And I wish I could remember a friend of mine uh, said something to me about perfection. Um, and I wish I could remember a teacher said it to her, but it's, it's, it's never going to be perfect. So do it anyway. I can't remember exactly what they said, but here's the thing about perfection. You, let me say this. Andrea, if I think about the first couple of podcasts I put out and then like there was even one about my ex-boyfriend. It was such an important story. And I, was, and I, but I did not do a well, good job of telling that story. It's too long. You got to let that stuff go and move on because the creativity that wants to be born from your soul is it's like putting a plug in a tub and it's like ready to burst and it's going to burst the pipes. And this is where illness comes from. This is where depression, this is where sadness comes in. And it's everything. Actually, what you think is perfect what you, what is imperfect to you is perfect to the person who's watching it. Who are you to define what is perfection when somebody else may watch something and actually resonate with the imperfection of your art? I want you to own that because the only person you're hurting, you're not only, you're hurting yourself, but you're also hurting all the other people that are going to benefit from your creative juices. But this is what I want you to do. I want nobody, uh, nobody's allowed to beat themselves up. You're not allowed. I want you to take perfect Andrea, imperfect Andrea, higher self Andrea, and on Andrea today. And I want you, the four of you, to go on a walk together and have a great conversation. Then I want you to go get some art stuff, crayons or something. And I want you to just be messy in it. When I did my soul picture, I really did not expect to show it to anybody. I, I thought it was going to be, and I just did it and I did it and I absolutely love it. You know, it's so beautiful to me that I put it here to remind me of my soul for that day. Mm -hmm. And then I put it out on Facebook, put it on my personal page, which is like, and I was like, it's been great. What do you want to say, honey? Thank you. Okay. If I can get, I'll try to ask, I'll ask my friend, Jessica, she listens to this podcast. Um, what that teacher told her about perfection. And when I, when she gives it to me, I'll put it, you're still a membership, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'll put it in membership for you, honey. So you could see it. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Time. Go out and do, be your magic, do your magic girl. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. All right. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to read this number because I can't take any more questions because I have to do another live broadcast at uh, 6 PM with the authors from my book, if anybody remembers the title, say it. <laughs> guides, mystical connections to soul guides and divine teachers. Guides, mystical connections to soul guides and divine teachers. And I have to do another live today. So I got to get the dogs out. I'm going to read this number. And I feel like it's going to have to do with a reading around perfection and getting your magic out. So the number is 323. What I want you to do right now is find what resonates with you and pull out a sentence. And then you're going to put it in the chat after the reading for me. I want you to resonate with it. Not, I don't care if you resonate with the reading or not. You know how I feel about that. I want you to, 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 to make it your own words. Like when Cheryl came on and I'm glad I did that, people have to put it in their own words. You ever read something so dense and so deep? And then if it, like, I think it was Todd Herman who taught it to me, like say it in your own words, teach it to someone else. I can't remember which class it was. It might've been him or somebody else. Hello, Micah. And I, I couldn't say it because I got it in my body, but I didn't know how to verbalize it. Then there's a disconnect, consciousness and spirit, you know? Okay. All right, Micah wants to be involved in this reading. So the three, 
we all know the threes about mind, body, and soul. Oh, fascinating. Okay. So today when I was doing the reading for that guy on the podcast, they showed me the number 55, but they showed it to me mirrored. So you are a three. When you look in the mirror at your mind, body, and soul, the three is opposite. We think that's not a correct three. Oh, that three is backwards. What is wrong with that three? Why is that three backwards? Because you're the three and then you look in the reflection and the three is backwards. It's not backwards. It's a whole other way of doing things. It's a whole other way of creating because it's your way of creating. It's your resonance. It's your energy. It's your magic. It's your creativity. It's your inspiration. So nothing is wrong. You are the way that you're meant to be. So they want you to own your mind, body, and soul the way that you own your mind, body, and soul. And every time you walk by the mirror or anytime you're outside, hold a mirror to yourself, especially when you're in nature, when you're looking at a tree, imagine a big, beautiful mirror on there. And imagine that that tree is reflecting back your highest truth, your highest alignment, your highest creativity. They put shackles on my ankles. And the shackles on the ankles of the devil card, it's representative of the devil card as well as they're showing me it's the two of swords. This is illusion. This is the stories that have been told to us. They are not true. You can unshackle yourself at any moment. Don't beat yourself up for the shackles. You adopted that behavior. You adopted that belief from other people. Just unshackle yourself. So the three is about ownership of self completely. So if every moment, even in the moments of imperfection, which Brene Brown is so good at teaching people of how to own their own imperfections, and it is the perfect moment, own that every single day. Now there's a two in between that. Now they had me put, so the threes are also eyes. They made me draw little circles around them. How do you see yourself? How do you see and hear yourself? They had me journal that two weeks ago. And I was amazed that when I was journaling about how I, because I'm like, oh, the world is finally seeing and hearing me. I'm getting out there. And then spirit was like, well, how do you see and hear yourself, especially around business? And I was like, oh, I don't, I'm not feeling that great about how I'm holding my business these days. How do you see and hear yourself? Journal about it. But really see and hear yourself from an unfiltered place from that musical instrument that you saw or that you did today. The two is about partnership, but it's about partnership with spirit, with the universe, with your soul, with your truth. And then that partnership leads to other beautiful partnerships in the world. And they're showing me the trees and the numbers in the trees because numbers are in trees, numbers make up everything. And they're showing me the two in the trees. And when you're out in nature, you feel the energy of the universe source loving you. And that is your true essence. Now the number adds up to a eight. Oh, it's perfect, it's business. Eight is all business. This is your essence. Whether you want a business or not, we think in business, like how are we being in the world? How are we showing up? How do we wanna show up? How do we wanna be loved? How do we love ourselves? So the eight is the number of strength card, infinity. There's something about strength they want to come through. So they're showing me, and I can't remember the card, it's a swords card and it's when they're, I think it's a six of swords and they're moving across the river. Allow, hmm. Allow the universe to be the strength that you need. Allow your guides to be the strength that you need. We're always trying to hold ourselves up by ourselves. What would happen if you really surrendered into the unseen forces of the divine and allowed it to be the courage for you and the strength and encouraged you to move forward? What would change in your life if you truly surrendered to the universe's courageous energy, energy supporting you and loving you and and, and pushing you along and, and really loving you through all the imperfect moments. Let me tell you, anybody who runs a business, there are gonna be moments that are gonna feel painful. It, that is when you really truly start becoming a success, when you learn how to work through those moments and shine your light even brighter. I'm gonna leave you with that, but I would love to hear what sentence was your biggest sentence? <laughs> Ayunice gives songs. Ayunice is a beautiful reader. You see it as Eunice in there, but she, she's a different pronunciation. And it's so funny because she'll be like, Marilyn, this is Eunice. And I'm like, 
you taught me how to say your name, your birth name, the right way. <laughs> the songs for the group is Dumbo song of the roustabouts, surface pressuring from Encanto. And it comes back to the sound of music. Do, re, mi, life is a scale that goes up and down with gusto. And yes, we can become flat or sharp. Our melody will change and we change. Allow for your soul to sing all the notes. Your symphony is the never over. And you say, do me a favor, honey, put that in membership and put that in the SAS group. It would be really beautiful if you shared that with everyone. Um, I, I would really love that for you. And if more songs come to you for people, please do share that. Okay, so I wanna, I'm gonna sign off in a second, but I wanna read some of yours, what you say. Um, thank you for those of you who don't know me. Thank you for trusting me with your journey today. I am active on my direct messenger and Instagram. I'm actually active on Facebook Messenger now. I finally figured out how to do it without these stupid, you're gonna get an autoresponder, but I am in there. Um, if you're thinking of joining the SAS experience, go to joinsas.com. If you've been in Soul Finder Academy or you joined the SAS experience before, you're automatically in it. There's the Facebook group. I do check. If you don't have the SAS experience in your in, in my system, then you have to purchase it. All right, let me read some of what you said here and then we're gonna end. Um, mm, mm, mm. Beva, I know I have much to give, to give say it will happen when I discover those ways. Beautiful, Beva. Susan, beautiful. Nothing is, Cheryl, Kathy, nothing is wrong. You are the way you are meant to be. Remove the shackles and free yourself. Allow the universe to be the strength that you need. Surrender and trust, beautiful. Hi, Lisa, it's so nice to meet you. I don't think I know you very well yet. Um, what would change if you surrendered to the courage of the universe? So need this. I'm so glad, honey. Um, I immediately thought of Encanto surface pressure. I don't know what that is, Gia. Can you educate me, please? Uh, Jill, anytime, it's so beautiful seeing you too, Jill. Anytime you walk by the mirror, imagine it's reflecting back to you, your highest truth. Great. It's great to see all you guys. It really is. Uh, Susan, ownership, partnership, allowance with myself and my guidance universe. Learning to see each shackle and undo it best I can. You know what I feel about that? Beva said, learning to see each shackle and undo it the best I can. If you surrender, the shackles come off. They come off. Okay. Unshackle yourself. Allow the universe and your guides to be the strength that you need. Instead of unshackle yourself, Louise, surrender and let the universe unshackle you. Trust yourself. Love who I see in the mirror, Gia said. Great, guys. Thank you so much for participating. It means the world to me. Your energy gives me so much to show up and be here with all of you. I love you guys. I, I love you with all my heart. And the, my biggest dream for all of you is that you recognize your worth. You recognize that you're a gift in this world and you live it. And if I can support you in any way of doing that, I'm here to support that. That's why I do this podcast because I believe in every single one of you. Um, so thank you so much. And I will see those of you in my program. I'll see you in membership. I'll see you in Next Level Living. And I'll see you in SAS. And uh, let's do something that we do on our Next Level Living calls. I'm going to mute everybody. And when I unmute you, when I count to three, you're going to say one word, okay? And whatever word you want to do. So I'm going to ask you all to unmute yourself. Hello. And then if Ryan's still there, let Ryan say a word. Let me count to three. I love Jane. Jane's like ready to jump in. She's just like, I'm ready. And Ryan's going to help too. Okay, so just think of any word. It could be the moment what this was today. I'm going to count to three. Ryan, I'm going to have you say the first word. And after Ryan says the first word, we'll all say our word. Ready, Ryan? One, two, three. Go. Crystal. Love. 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 Great Thanks job, so everybody. Thank you so much. Much love to all of you. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thank you very much.